All right, all right. Red Nation, today we're going to be talking about PACS. That's the picture archiving and communication system at a hospital so that you can become familiar with that if you're working in a radiology department. Coming up here at Our Radiology World. So when I was born, most of medical imaging was taking x-rays and storing those x-rays in large file folders. And that was the method used to store the images. You have a physical media there that you could look at on a light box. Today, it's all digital. <clears throat> There's a need to have a way to store the images, to have them be able to be recalled, and to have a system wherein the radiologist can read the images and report on the images as well. So this is what is called the PACS infrastructure. Picture archiving communication system is replacing that film-based system with modern digital imaging. There's actually lots of components that are involved in a PACS-based infrastructure. And these change over time. The physics that I've talked about, photo that Compton, those things haven't changed in the last hundred years. And the way that PACS is set up today is different than it was 10 years ago, and it'll be different 10 years in the future. Let's jump into it. First off, so we'll have emergency backup server. It's going to be connected to many of the components in our PACS infrastructure. This is really good from a perspective of safety when the power goes out. Then we're going to introduce what we call the RIS or the radial information system. Radiology information system is used for scheduling, billing, and general communication within a radiology department. There's also a hospital information system, which has a similar purpose, but at the hospital level rather than just at the radiology level. So if we think about our radiology information system, the way that it communicates is actually with a certain type of interface called HL7 interface. HL7 is a standard for communicate these text-based requests within the medical system coming from the RIS in the language of HL7. The modality work list is maintained, which keeps track of the different requests to be performed on different imaging modality. All the imaging modalities in your system, X-ray, CT, MR, ultrasound, they're going to be connected here Number one, to your backup server, and then also they're going to be connected to the modality work list so that the technologist can pull the modality work list and be able to understand which type of patients are going to be coming for which type of procedures on which type of imaging equipment. Then after the imaging study has been performed, like we've talked about before, our medical images are saved as ACOM images. So DICOM is the language of the images where HL7 is the language for our text-based requests. All these different modalities are all going to write DICOMs. They're going to have different information in the header, like we talked about in our DICOM video. Then the DICOM images actually are going to go to a PAX archive. This can also be hooked up to a PAX web server so that once the images are on the archive, they can then be seen on a PAX web server. Finally, we're going to introduce the radiologists that are going to be reading the images. So the radiologists are going to be getting the images from PAX. This could either be coming from this PAX archive or coming from the PAX web server. These Reading stations also are going to be hooked up to the HL7 interface. And at the reading stations, the radiologist does the reading, the dictation, and the reporting. The RIS system can also be connected to the EMR for the electronic medical record. And everything we've been talking about so far has all been within the hospital or the network of hospitals. Sometimes you could call that a franchise. There's also communication, which is going to happen on the local area network or the, the hospital's internet. So the images will go from that PAX web server to the local area network and then can also be connected to on-site backup. The images can also be distributed and accessible via the local area network, such as making physical media copies or making an electronic copy on a physical media. In addition to having an on-site backup, it's also good to have an off-site backup. And this is all part of this PAX infrastructure. This is much more multifaceted than I realized when I first started in this field that I think most of the actual patients don't necessarily realize these steps that's involved in order to get the order in, for that order to be sitting in the work list, for the imaging to happen, the images to get onto the PAX, the images to get read and dictated, and for those reports end up in your 
medical record. The packs can be broken down into specialized packs as well. Specialized packs that are good at doing one thing well, but aren't going to replace your whole packs. So for instance, there's a nuclear medicine packs where they're good at showing you many small images at one time because nuclear medicine makes relatively lower resolution images. The process is actually to look at a lot of them at once and then also to look at quantitative uptake values. There's also specific ones for ultrasound that are really good at videos because ultrasound has really high temporal resolution so it can actually make videos very well. And those can be viewed well on an ultrasound packs. And mammography, because you have a very large image matrix, actually moving and navigating within that mammography image can be done really well with a specific mammography packs that can even be hooked up to a special type of keyboard system such that the moves can be made very quickly within reviewing mammography images, especially since the radiologists that are reviewing the mammography images have a relatively large workload of reading for these mammography cases. Everything that I talked about before, as far as that PAX infrastructure, that's all on the site, except for that off-site storage. Everything on the site is behind what's called a firewall, such that people on the internet outside the hospital should not be able to get to any of the things inside of this firewall. For instance, someone externally should not be able to access the packs directly. They have to go through what's called this virtual private network. So the way that you communicate with the local area network of your hospital is through what's called a virtual private network. And that's how you get to the internet at large. And in that way, the radiology IT professional can actually set it up such that it's safe, the things within the hospital are protected. But at the same time, there's a real desire to have a lot of telerate and actual reporting going on outside the hospital. So those images will be going from the PACs through the local area network, through a virtual private network, and then will be available within these telerating stations. You can also have monitoring, for instance, that can be happening outside from this internet connection via the VPN. Now you understand the PACs infrastructure, but do you understand the DICOM structure, how the DICOMs are actually laid out, and how large DICOMs are for the different imaging modalities? See our video on DICOMs coming up next.